Long years ago, we made a tryst with destiny. And now the time comes when we shall redeem our pledge. Not wholly or in full measure, but very substantially. At the stroke of the midnight hour when the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. An indomitable spirit that characterizes half of the population. The better half, of course. The Indian woman. History has witnessed much. Prosperity, progress, defeat, death and rebirth. And in addition, it has been graced by the indomitable human spirit embodied in the lives and works of pioneers. Many women who dared to make a choice and followed through with purposeful action to alter the course of history. One of them is Akka Mahadevi. In a word, it's the Lord Janna Malika Arjuna. We find her message of self-discovery, requesting us to challenge the norms of those who wish to curtail the expression of new ideas. Ayah, if husk without grains is water, would it ever grow and bear fruit? If senseless people follow pieties, would they ever lose their ignorance and be happy? Would the perfume one wears last forever? Those who do not know my lord, Channa Malika Arjuna, know no piety, my brother. India has witnessed the female persona portrayed as a symbol of the divine in the form of a goddess. All these classifications can never completely capture the voices of the various change makers who rose up successfully again and again whenever challenges, opportunities and occasions came a calling. Going as far back as the Vedic age, we find evidence of Indian women contributing to the development of knowledge in society. In many hymns in the Rig Veda Samhit, an ancient Indian text, we find chants composed by Surya Savitri. When Surya went to her husband, thought was her pillow, sight was the coal in her eyes, the earth and the sky, became her bridal box. In the Upanishads, we find philosophers like Maitri and Gargi are found engaging in discussions and debates. And in the Puranas, Ittihas, Smritis, we find reference to abundant accomplishments of women. Thus, the modern Indian woman stands not alone, but is the bearer of a long heritage of self-liberation and empowerment. asked a multitude of women in the national capital to give us an image symbolizing empowerment. I'm working with Manipur Women Gun Survivors Network. 120 women artisans in Himachal Pradesh. We work with uh, over 5,000 widows in 300 villages of Manipur. And giving new skills to the Himachal women on hand looms. I am the founder of a company which deals majorly in uh, health and upkeep of women's life. In vocational unit, we teach special children uh, to do these kind of work. We had a very different concept of teaching through museums. By profession, I am a fashion designer and also into teaching so that when they are out from this project, they are self-independent enough to take this as a livelihood in future. Women in the police are definitely making contribution to making police force in India a very, very credible force. The answers surprised us. They were as varied as the women as heterogeneous as our country's socio-political milieu. And all the answers had to do with one simple aspect of their lives, the ability to make a conscious choice, not about power, not about competition. In this feature, we tell but a few stories of triumph 
burst in grit and determination and brilliance and dedication. Our champions are women who dared to strive for what they really wanted. The skies, the moon, the sun, the earth, their own betterment, the betterment of others, their own dignity. And their tales of success, their struggles, often from humble beginnings, remind us again and again that there is always a fire, just needs a spark. Mumbai, Amji Mumbai, the city that never sleeps. Surekha Yadav would agree. She too had something similar to say. Surekha Yadav was born into a farmer's family in Satara, Maharashtra from very humble beginnings. She took up electrical engineering and wished to continue her engineering so as to become a teacher. But the Indian railways caught her eye. Some say women do not drive railway engines. Surekha refused to believe them. The train was a machine. She learned its mechanics and undertook a journey that made it possible for her to be responsible for thousands of lives each time she reported for duty. Carrying people to and fro from their destinations and across so many stations. Driving a train is not everyone's cup of tea. Sureka, like anybody else, had to train to drive a train. I was thinking just what, where I will work. And in the meantime, I came through the employment news in which notification was given for assistant drivers, electric. And the requirement was that diploma in any faculty. And 18 years completed should be there. And one more thing was written, ladies can apply. I was fulfilling all three. So I filled the form and passed all three exams. And I was appointed as an assistant logo pilot on 14 February 1989. Surekha now teaches others to drive. She is an inspiration to not just other women train drivers, but many other young women who decide to overcome the myth of a man's job as the first woman engine driver in India and Asia. She is open and candid about the challenges, about the fixed mindset of some sections of society. Her life is a lesson about the possibilities of a growth mindset. But when I was appointed, people were astonished. Everybody was surprised. It is not a toy to play with an engine. You take it in hand and run everywhere and come on children and we'll play. It is a huge engine and how you will do it? I said, no, it's not a point. Other 25 with me who have been selected are just like me and I'm just like them. If they can do, why I cannot? Isn't it? The selection procedure, whatever it was, just like them, I passed it. My determination increased when I realized that I have to do something and I have been selected to do something and when you have been selected, you should not step back. But you have to step forward because you have proved you are fit for that, then you must do. That was the thing. And even though some people were supporting, some were not supporting. Some were thinking that she'll do it and some were thinking she'll not do it. But totally it was on me. So how much effort I should put in and what I put, it will be. Hyderabad, famous for its history, Haleem and uh, Jessie Thomas, otherwise proudly known as the Missile Woman of India, was born in a small business family in Alapura, Kerala. She took up engineering when it was not common for a woman to be an engineer. 
Growing up in a rocket launching station, her fascination for the guided systems knew no bound. She opted to study radar technology, a nascent field to follow her dream. What I feel is, don't climb the mountain with the intention that the world should see you, but climb the mountain with the intention to see the world and learn more. From the childhood, I was uh, interested in uh, this uh, science maths field and I was somehow determined I should go for engineering. I had to go for an uh, education loan and uh, my, both my father and mother, they were so supportive that uh, I didn't feel the pinch of going for that uh, course. It is not as though Tessie's life went smoothly upon entering DRDO as a scientist for India's indigenous missile technology. One of the most important traits of success in creativity is the resilience and grit attributed to Tessie's growth mindset. She learned from the short fuses of other projects and made it a point to perfect her craft even more until her creation reached new heights. While uh, doing engineering also, I was interested in uh, towards the, even though my VTEC um, was from electrical engineering, I wanted to do something new. Uh, like we were given electives of uh, choice by radar systems, which uh, nobody was willing to take up the topic, which I felt that is a new area and I should learn that uh, new technology. That is how I took up the radar engineering learned uh, more about the military application of those uh, systems and that is where it uh, when the DRDO advertisement appeared in the newspaper I felt like uh, applying for a course which uh, I was not uh, knowing what could be the technology or what could be the science but I applied for that and uh, I was one among the 10 who got uh, selected for the DRDO sponsored uh, MTEP program. So when uh, Dr. Kalam as the director, um, he has inspired the IGMDP program wherein which all the missile projects has uh, taken up and Agni also the uh, re-entry technology has to be established. That was the first challenge given to us and then uh, we started working on the Agni demonstrator during his time and thereafter I have worked for all the Agni series of uh, systems from 1 to 5 series. And it's every technology, every new system is a challenge. Uh, I was also present on the inaugural uh, function of the Rashti Avishkar Abhiyan, where uh, Dr. Kalam was inaugurating the function. He introduced uh, my colleague who had come from ISRO, Dr. Nantini, and myself to the school children. Almost 5,000 students were there that this is the great thing uh, what uh, the women have done and they are here to talk to you and interact with you. And after the event, we had the opportunity to talk to the young uh, minds of this country. Tessie Thomas stands out as a bastion of scientific temper and she was conferred the Lal Bahadur Shastri National Award for her outstanding contributions to the field of missile technology. In 2008, the Indian Women's Scientists Association paid great tribute to India's Agni Putri. They said, like most women, she also does a tightrope walk between home and career, between being a mother and a scientist who is dedicated to her job. Surekha Yadav and Tessie Thomas, both pioneers in their fields, carry on an ancient tradition of excellence. The Rig Vedic women scholars of ancient India, namely the Brahma Vadanis and the Sadyod Vahas, studied the Vedas in total seclusion. But our champions of today have learned how to balance professional excellence with personal responsibility. Jaipur, a city painted in pink. When Panani and Katyayana talk about women in the Vedic age, we are not surprised to see King Ashoka's daughter, Sangha Mitra, 
leave riches behind in search of spirituality. Similarly, Chavi Rajavat, educated at Lady Sri Ram College and an MBA, gave up her corporate job to answer a calling to develop her nation at the grassroots as the youngest woman Sarpanch in India. So February 2010 is where um, my village council was to have its elections and it just so happened that it was a reserved seat for women. And um, the villagers um, thought of me because um, they wanted to see development. Her grandfather, Dadu to her, was a constant influence in her life. She grew up under him and acquired the passion to better her village. Encouraged by Chavi's grandfather, the villagers call her Kaunsa. <laughs> जो गांव काफी इम्प्रूवमेंट कर लिया था आसपास में ऐसा कोई गांव नहीं था जिसमें इतना इम्प्रूवमेंट हो जितना मेरे गांव में था थोड़े दिन बाद जब मैंने छोड़ दिया तो गांव वालों ने मेरे पोती को पसंद किया ये सरपंच बनी Progress does not mandate leaving one's traditions behind, but pushing them forward into becoming more wholesome and more just. Her people come to Chavi for advice. Having seen the world and being highly educated, she is able and willing to help them in their story of continuous improvement. By working at the lowest level of governance in India, I think it's a beautiful platform in the five years uh, of my first term. Uh, gain access to the government schemes to bring about whatever development we possibly could, especially the grassroots uh, bureaucracy, saw me as um, this youngster who probably just was around to kill time and uh, saw this as a very, or probably came with a very romantic notion. So initially I noticed that they weren't taking me seriously and um, not just them but even uh, including um, a few politicians and the senior bureaucracy. So when my first project to um, revive the reservoir, what we did was we actually made a project report. And I went to the different offices with that project report in my hand. And I think that is when they realized that I actually meant business and I wasn't here to while away time. Um, and that brought in a certain element of respect uh, towards me. Even though she walks her own path, she enjoys the ride. Here too we see the growth mindset at work. A person who enjoys the challenges and utilizes them by turning them into opportunities. Despite education being common to Surekha, Tessi and Chavi, the desire to ask questions and to seek success is not reserved for any particular strata of society. We now move on to a very different world. A world where hunger is often acute and dignity often lacking. Our next champions emerge from this world but manage to shatter its stereotypes along the way. Bhopal. A capital, a city bathed in water, both from natural and man-made lakes. Buribai belongs to the Beel tribe, a fierce people historically employed by Rajputs and Marathas as warriors. The Bheels are renowned for their Pithora art and Goomer dance. Women were not allowed to draw until Bhuribai, an ordinary young woman, showed extraordinary courage to challenge this restriction and take Pithora art to new heights. <laughs> मैं देश विदेश लेके जाती हूँ उनसे मिलती हूँ मुझे बहुत अच्छा ही लगता है उनको समझाती हूँ 
वो समझ के भी हमारी कलाओं को बहुत खुश होते हैं बहुत अच्छे से मेरी मिलते हैं मेरे से खरीदते हैं पहचानते हैं मेरी माँ मना करती है तब भी मैं झांक के देखती हूँ ये लोग मिल के क्या कर रहे हैं तो वो देख के और फिर मेरी माँ बहुत डांटती थी बहुत मेरे को डांट पड़ती थी फिर भी मैंने अपने डरते डरते वो देखती थी कैसे पूजा कर रहे हैं क्या कर रहे हैं हमारी समाज में ये खेतीबाड़ी का काम करते हैं कटाई मक्का बोना ये लोगों के खेतों में जाके मजदूरी करना ये पैसे कमाने के लिए जाते थे लेकिन मैंने ये काम नहीं किया मैंने अपने ही कला नहीं छोड़ी मैं दीवालों पे काम करती थी लेकिन उन्हीं को लेकर मैं भोपाल में आ गई मेरी शादी हुई तब मैं गांव में थी मेरे पति के साथ मैं भोपाल आ गई मजदूरी करने तब मजदूरी करी मैं भारत भवन में आके बचपन की ज़िंदगी मुझे मालूम नहीं था लेकिन उन्हें सत्तर फिट दीवार पर अपना मैंने जीवन दिखाया है वो पहली बार मैंने वो काम करा है और ये मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगा ये करते समय Bhuri Bai began her journey as a contemporary bheel artist with the encouragement of J Swaminath the then director of Bharat Bhavan the center of culture in Bhopal Main pehli baar mili Swaminathan ji se sawal kare unhone to maine kaha main mazduri kar rahi hu aur main aapko kaise bana ke dikhaun wo kehne lage bole aapko mazduri kya milti hai to maine kaha mere ko 6 rupaye milte hain to aapko 6 rupaye milte hain to main aapko 10 rupaye dunga तो मैंने कहा मेरे को दस रुपए नहीं चाहिए मेरे को छः रुपए चाहिए तो आप कैसे बनाओगे के अकाई में बनाओ तो मैंने कहा मैं अपने घर की दीवारों में मिट्टी कलर से अपने हाथ के कलर बना लेती हूँ और अपने घर की दीवारों पे ही बनाती हूँ उनको मैंने बना के दिए अच्छा लगा उनको देख के उन्होंने रख लिया तो मुझे लगा ये मेरी मजदूरी नहीं देंगे तो मैं कहने लगी मैं आप मजदूरी नहीं दोगे तो मैं क्या घर ले कर तो कहने लगे बोले क्या मजदूरी देंगे तो मैंने कहा मेरे को छः रुपये देना नहीं नहीं आपको छः रुपये नहीं देंगे आपको दस रुपये देंगे मैं लेके अपने घर चली गई शी पेंटेड हर फैमिलीज एंसेस्ट्रल हॉर्स एंड वॉज थ्रिल्ड टू सी दी इफेक्ट ऑफ द पोस्टर कलर एज ए टच द वाइट पेपर पेंट एंड कैनवस ब्रॉट नॉवल टेक्स्चर टू द नेरेटिव ऑफ बी लाइफ Currently she works as an artist in the Adivasi Lok Kala Academy in Bhopal and is the recipient of the highest award from the government of Madhya Pradesh the Shikhar Samman and then in the following year the government felicitated her with the Ahilya Samman she transports herself to her past to capture the emotions of Bheel culture her paintings are a complete record of the Bheel way of life from the serenity of memory pillars deep in the forest to bheel deities and to traditional body tattoos main bhuri se bhuri bhai ban gayi it is unthinkable that a woman without any education without any powerful family connections should today be worth millions kalpana saroj the ceo of kamani tubes in mumbai is such a woman valued at millions of dollars she is probably the quintessential slum dog millionaire main duniya ke har kone mein jati hu desh videshon mein jati hu wahan pe jo dr baba sahab ambedkar ke bahut bade bade programs hote hain jahan mujhe bulaya jata hai buddhism pe programs hote hain wahan mujhe bulaya jata hai kalpana saroj was married at the age of 12 she was harassed and abused by her in-laws she led a harrowing life until rescued by her father मेरे बाबा छः महीने के बाद में आए देखा तो उन्होंने अपनी बेटी को खुद वो नहीं पहचान पाए कि ये उनकी खुद की बेटी है मैं अपनी बेटी को लेके जा रहा हूँ लेकिन जो समाज का रवैया था वो एकदम से चेंज हो गया था मामा जी मेरे रिश्तेदार समाज के चार लोग सभी मेरे बाबा को बोलते थे और वो बातें मुझे अच्छी नहीं लगती कि मेरी वजह से मेरे बाबा को सुनना पड़ रहा है That is when she decided that she would pursue financial security 
in a materialistic world. At the age of 16, she shifted to Mumbai and began to work in a garment factory. I had heard on the radio that there was some scheme of government. loan was given. And I took a loan of 50,000 They say that fortune favors the brave. And Kalpana is not only brave, she was also financially astute. She learned the language of business and bureaucracy and climbed the ladder higher and higher. And one day, opportunity came a-knocking when an acquaintance under distress wanted to sell his land. In this beach, a man was in the Kalyan, he was in a plot that was not going to be a plot. And he had a lot of money for him. That plot he gave me, I gave him 1 lakh rupees. So then I took a partner here from Sindhi and I became a builder from this way. Having found an opportunity, she grabbed it with both hands. These Kamani Tubes, our company, are the first one of our country in which the Supreme Court has taken such a thing that the original owner has taken such a thing and the owner has taken such a thing that the owner has taken such a thing. Our country has taken such a thing that the owner 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 has taken such a thing. So, these people have taken such a thing that the owner has taken such a thing that the owner has taken such a thing that the owner has taken such a thing that the company was bad, the company was bad, and then the company was sick. To revive a dying unit is far from easy. It took everything out of her to reconstruct the dying company. But for her efforts, she was awarded the Padma Shri for trade in 2013. So when I took my scheme and said that I have to take care of this company, they told me that this company is learning. So do you think this is the right thing to do with day-to-day work today? Because the court will give you or not, we don't know. Because the court has a company. But if you want to take care of it, then at this time, we are going to take care of it today. And we are going to take care of it today. And I have to start the work. This is the story of 2000. So from 2000 to 2006, there were continued hearings in the court. There were meetings in the daily IDBI. This way, this whole process is going on. On March 2006, the court passed my scheme and made me a original manager. The company was learned. The liability 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 was learned. This way, the company got me. In 2011, we went out of SICA. Kalpana's success story is not some romantic fairy tale. Rather, it is the story of how she became a go-getter. Tired of being a David, she decided to become a Goliath. And that's exactly what she became. Today, she's worth more than $300 million. Not small change for a woman who was once a child bride. My work has given me so much that I didn't stop anywhere, I didn't stop anywhere, I didn't stop anywhere, and today I'm going to reach my mind. Kalpana's amazing story takes us back to the beginning, from where we started this wonderful journey. Indomitable spirit, the Indian woman.